Hey, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Azure High Availability Solutions. Microsoft Azure Global Infrastructure is designed and constructed at every layer to deliver the highest levels of redundancy and resiliency to its customers. Azure Infrastructure is composed of geographies, regions, and availability zones which limit the blast radius of a failure and therefore limit potential impact to customer applications and data. The Azure Availability Zones construct was developed to provide a software and networking solution to protect against data center failures and to provide increased high availability to Microsoft customers. Availability Zones are unique physical locations within an Azure region. And each zone is made up of one or more data centers with independent power, cooling, and networking. The physical separation of availability zones within a region limits the impact to applications and data from zone failures such as large-scale flooding, major storms, or superstorms, and other events that could disrupt site access, safe passage, extended utilities uptime, and availability of resources. Availability zone and their associated data centers are designed such that if one zone is compromised, the services, capacity, and availability are supported by other availability zones in the region. Availability zones can be used to spread a solution across multiple zones within a region, allowing for an application to continue functioning when one zone fails. With availability zones, Azure offers industry best 99.99 virtual machine uptime SLA and zone redundant services replicate your services and data across availability zones to protect from single point of failures. Let us learn about how Azure delivers high reliability for your solution. Designing solutions that continue to function in spite of failure is key to improving the reliability of a solution. In cloud-based solutions, building to survive failure is shared responsibility. This can be viewed at three levels. Resilient foundation, resilient services, and resilient applications. The foundation is the Microsoft investment in the platform, including availability zones. On top of this foundation are the Azure services that customers can enable to support high availability, such as zone redundant storage, which replicates data across zones. The application should be architect to support resiliency. When architecting for resilience, all three layer foundations, services, and applications should be considered to, to achieve the highest level of reliability. Since a solution can be made up of many components, each component should be designed for reliability. Now let us understand what is zone versus zone redundant architecture. Azure services supporting availability zones fall into two categories, zonal and zone redundant. Customer workloads can be categorized to utilize either architecture scenarios to meet application performance and durability requirements. With zonal architecture, a resource can be deployed to a specific self-selected availability zone to achieve more stringent latency or performance requirements. With zone redundant architecture, the Azure platform automatically replicates the resource and data across zones. And Microsoft manages the delivery of high availability since Azure automatically replicates and distributes instances within the region. Zonal architecture applies to a specific resource, typically an infrastructure as a service resource like a VM or a managed disk, as shown in this example. In this example, each VM and a load balancer are deployed to a specific zone. With zone redundant services, the distribution of the workload is a feature of service and is handled by Azure. So Azure automatically replicates the resources across zones without requiring your intervention. ZRS, for example, replicates the data across three zones, so zone failure doesn't impact the HA of the data. This is an example illustration 
of his zone redundant load balancer with availability zones Anager offers industry best 99.99 VM uptime SLA. This is a following illustration which explains the different levels of HA offered by a single VM, availability sets, and availability zones. Using a VM workload as an example, a single VM has an SLA of 99.9%. This means that the VM will be available 99.9% of the time. Within a single data center, the use of availability set can increase the level of SLA to 99.95 by protecting a set of VMs, ensuring they will not be on a same set of hardware. Within a region, VM workloads can be distributed across availability zones to increase the SLA to 99.99%. Every organization has unique requirements and you should design your application to best meet your complex business needs. Defining a target SLA will make it possible to evaluate whether the architecture meets your business requirement. Some of the things you should consider while architecting the high availability is what are the availability requirement? How much downtime is acceptable? How much will your potential downtime cost your business? How much should you invest in making application highly available? What are the data backup requirements? And what are the data replication requirements? And what are the monitoring requirements? And does your application have specific latency requirements? Let's look into high availability for business continuity and disaster recovery. Virtual machines are previously separated across zones and virtual network is created using load balancers at each site. And these locations are close enough for high availability replication. So your applications stay running despite any issues at physical locations. On this architecture, let me explain you what are the data flows. The first flow is to create a zone redundant load balancer. The second step is to create a front end subnet, then to create a database subnet, create virtual machines in three availability zones, and configure zone redundant SQL database and add VMs to the load balancer back and pull. You finally, deploy your application on VMs for redundancy and high availability. The components involved are virtual machine to provision your Windows and Linux virtual machines in seconds, Azure SQL database, which is a managed intelligent SQL in the cloud, and load balancer which deliver high availability and network performance to your applications. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we're going to learn about recommendations for minimizing Azure cost. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.